Welcome to another Hop Around Microcontrollers video. Um, this one is on the um, Arduino Nano RP2040. So it's the same CPU as the Raspberry Pi Pico, but it's a di device from Arduino. It has Wi Fi. So I've recently implemented um, in the runtime that I'm porting using the Arduino IDE, I've implemented uh, HTTP client and Wi Fi. So uh, we can connect to the web and we can do an HTTP request in a simple one-liner. So it's just got a one-liner that if it succeeds, it returns true. And it uh, gives you the response in this uh, string over here. The next thing I'm going to do in, in, in my demo um, that I have today is uh, a simple device that I have for turning the driveway lights on um, within a certain time of sunset and then turning them off again afterwards. Um, the way it works is it connects to um, two web APIs, uh, one to get the current, to, one to get, to get the time right so that it, it does a daily, daily check to make sure it's clocks right. And then a second one to um, ask about information about sunset and sunrise. So in addition to um, illustrating how web request works, um, I'll also show how we can uh, parse JSON because these files are returning, these uh, APIs are returning their responses in the JSON format. So JSON's a, a very simple file format. It's based on JavaScript. It is JavaScript. So they use the JavaScript syntax as a data format. Um, in JSON, the primary ob object is called an object, and it's actually a dictionary of keys and values, where the keys are strings and the values can be any other kind of object. Um, the other structured type is an array, which is actually a list in the in our sense of any type of object. So you can have lists of you can have arrays of objects, you can have uh, objects that contain lists, and the other types are strings, numbers, and booleans, and a null. There's a room for a null. Um, anyway, uh, let me show you how this is done. So the, the web request, we first um, connect to the Wi-Fi. So you need to have your SSID and password. Obviously, I'm not going to show mine. Uh, if it successfully connects after it's done that, uh, you do your web request to first get the, the time. This one's based on a city um, of the time zone I'm in. I'm on the South Island in New Zealand. If it succeeds, I'll have the a string containing the uh, the uh, JSON for the time, and then I'm going to use my uh, parser, my JSON parser, to parse that string and return it to me in a hopper structure type. And this hopper structure type is a dictionary cont with where the keys are strings and the values are variants because they could be other dictionaries and other strings and so it, it'll it'll return a hierarchical type when it deserializes and then we do the same thing for the sunset we call the other api which is based on longitude and latitude and it returns a string and we parse that and it'll give us a structure type for the sunset very good let's go have a look at the serial the um i've got a uh, there's a unit under system called serialize. Currently, it only has uh, one format that it serializes to and fro, which is um, from, which is uh, JSON. So it can either take hopper structure types and serialize them to a string of JSON, or it can do the reverse, which is to take um, a string of JSON and parse it into a hopper structure type. So it's only it's about 500 lines of code and this is a really good example for illustrating how hoppers, hoppers structured types work because it covers all of them and it also is a very good example to learn how variants work so um, it's included in the source just like everything else in this project you can see the hopper source for this uh, parser all right Anyway, uh, once we get our response back, we can iterate through the bits, the useful, interesting bits from that uh, JSON file. Um, and then we can uh, chop up the strings that come back to make useful things with them. And then, uh, like I said, I'm working in, uh, well, I didn't, I didn't mention, but there's no clock on these devices yet. 
on these microcontrollers, but they are millis, and if you divide millis by a thousand, you get seconds. So if we work in seconds, that's all we really need. So we need the the time in seconds when we when we got the time from the web. So the last time we checked. Then we need the time in seconds at that time, and if we have the time in seconds of sunset, subtract the one from the other, add it to the uh, current millis, and we'll see uh, whether we are before or after sunset and by how much. So it's just it's a clock that just works in seconds. And if you check the time on the web relatively frequently, you know, once a week or so, um, you won't run out of seconds, you won't overflow. Um, my system checks once a day. All right, let's compile that. So building, if you look at the bottom of the screen here, it's finished building. And then I can uh, launch the debugger. Um, it says it successfully uploaded it to my microcontroller. And then if I F5 it to run it, it connects to the web and there are our times. So it's currently 5.30 here. Sunset's in about uh, three hours from now. That's the, num the time in seconds of now. That's the time in seconds of sunset. And that's my current millis in seconds. So subtract that one from that one. Difference between these two added to that tells you when sunset's going to be today. All right. Let's continue and use this example to illustrate the debugger again. So I've hidden away the microcontroller so that you can see the stack trace and watch window. Um, we can go and put a breakpoint somewhere. Like uh, once we have everything, let's do that. It runs again, stops when it hits my breakpoint, and now I've got an enormous amount of stuff in the debugger showing up here. Um, so it pulled results from Sunset. So Sunset was a dictionary, and it pulled another di dictionary. So if we do, we do we see Sunset? Oh, there's Sunset. So Sunset so has has results in it. So we pulled that one out, and that gave us um, you know the next the next dictionary in the hierarchy. I need to make variants be um, rolled out. It's not. It's not. The debug is not uh, showing them yet. I'll, I can still do that. Um, the strings. So this is the string response from the web request. Um, and is there another one for time? Yes. There's the time response for time. Web request for time. Uh, you get the idea. And as you step in the debugger. Uh, new things appear and get changed. So we're going to pause hours now. So hours should change. Yes, it did. Now we're going to pause minutes. Minutes changed and now seconds. Yeah. So full symbolic debugger for doing your microcontroller development with a modern curly brace and semicolon language sort of in the same flavor as C Sharp and Java, but without uh, classes and built for small devices, so super efficient. Anyway, um, thank you for watching, and uh, you can give me your feedback in the comments. Thank you.